All right, it is time to solve some equations. So again, we are just doing a review, so I don't think a big intro is necessary. Do we agree? Do we need a, do we need a grandiose intro like Marilyn Monroe, or are we good? We're good? OK. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at how to solve some equations. I'm going to do number 32, which is the even section in your, uh, in your book. Uh, you guys are responsible for the odds. 14 minus x equals negative 7. Remember, the point in any solve, uh, equation solver is to get the indicated variable by itself. And you have to just kind of unstick everything that's stuck to it. So I'm going to get rid of this 14 by subtracting 14. Now, there was actually a couple of different ways to solve this. I could have added x to both sides, right? I could have added x to both sides to make it positive. But I think this is faster. x is going to equal negative 21. And then to get x fully by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides. Or you can divide both sides, either way, by negative 1. And x is going to equal positive 21. Do we agree? We agree. Joshua? Cool. Uh, 34. The only thing they can really do to make equation solving harder for you is to add more things to do before you get to a position where you're comfortable. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that. If I have x plus 2x plus 3x plus 4x plus 5x equals 45, it doesn't quite look like 32, but there's a way we can manipulate this left side to make it look like 32. What should I do with all of these x's? Who can raise their hand and let us know? What do you think? Aaron? Add them. Add them all, right? Combine like terms. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Anybody know the answer to that riddle? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Evan? 15. You have 15 x's. Evan's already been accepted into the college of his choice, by the way. 15x equals 45. Divide by 15. On both sides, x equals, who can raise their hand and tell us what does x equal? Brian, 3. Boom. Questions on any of this so far? Easy, medium, hard? Easy. Easy? Excellent. Excellent. That is what I want to hear. OK, 36. I hope that you guys, being the A team, will not be made uncomfortable by this problem. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes people are put off by fractions. Please don't be. Fractions are your friend. All right? And don't be scared of them because they're smaller than you. I'm going to add 3 over 5x to both sides. So I get 3 fourths equals. Well, what's 2 fifths plus 3 fifths? 1, right? 5 fifths or 1x. So I'll just put x plus 2 over 4. Good thing is we've got common denominators already. They did the hard work for us. x equals 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is how many fourths? One of them. You had 3 quarters. You spent 2 playing Street Fighter. You have 1 quarter left. 38. 2d plus 5 equals 8d plus 2. Concept in 36 that I didn't cover. Whenever you have variables on both sides, you have to move all the variables to one side of the equal sign. Do we agree? Yes, we should agree. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2d from both sides. Now, I could have subtracted 8d if I wanted to, but I prefer to keep my variables positive. Whatever you guys decide is up to you. 5 should equal 6d plus 2. And now we have something that looks like an earlier problem. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. 3 equals 6d. Divide both sides by 6. d equals 2, right? No. What does d equal? 1 half. Please do not make that mistake. That was actually very common in uh, one of my prior schools. They used to think that 3 divided by 6 was 2. It's some kind of 2, I started telling you, it's a variation of 2, has 2 in it. Okay, we good? We doing good, everybody? Oops. That would not have been an effective method of erasing. Okay, well, you people who are bothered by that are going to have to be bothered. Um, raise your hands if that bothers you. Fine. Jeez, man. Okay. OK, 
Okay, raise your hands if you're feeling better. Okay. Want to make you guys comfortable. All right, want to make you guys comfortable. That's fine. You know. Actually, what's really what really should be bothering you is that I accidentally chopped off a little bit of the homework when I did that. Oh, well. Okay, we did that. Uh, okay, so 40. Three times the quantity 4 minus 5K equals 2K minus 4. Okay, same thing. Variables on both sides, and yet the left side has another layer of stuff. One more layer of inception that you've got to go down. All right, so we are going to do the distributive property. I hope you guys remember that. That is 12 minus 15K equals 2K minus 4. I'm going to add 15K to both sides. Oh, darn, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. 15K. That's going to get out of there. 12 equals 17K minus 4. Add 4 to both sides. We know what we're doing, right? We good, y'all? Good. Who, who can raise your hand and tell us what's the final answer? K equals what? Andres. 16 over 17, good job. Okay, let's do something a little bit more foreign looking. 46, 2.3n plus 1 equals 1.3n plus 7. Decimals. You can either multiply everything by 10 or understand that when I subtract 1.3n from both sides, how many n's am I going to have? 2.3 minus 1.3. 1. I'm going to have an n. Plus 1 equals 7. n equals? Joshua? 6. Good job. Okay, let's make it a little more complicated. Let's give you guys some fractions with a different denominator here. 3 over 4 n minus 2 <clears throat> equals 1 half n plus 7. Okay. Again, variables on both sides of the equal sign. I'm going to go ahead and subtract one half n from both sides. Now, when I subtract one half n, I'm going to need a common denominator, right? So before I even make it one half n, what should I convert one half n into? Robert, what do you think? Two fourths n, right? And since we're subtracting, we don't need the negative. We got that. So three fourths minus two fourths is. One fourth minus two equals seven, and now we're back to something we know how to do. Okay, that one seemed a little less responsive. Raise your hands if I confused you at all with that problem, if I moved too fast at all. Good. Gannon, how you doing? You good? All right, was that, did I move too fast or? Okay, excellent. Good, good, good. Raise your hands if you're okay with solving equations. You're okay with it? Okay, good. Um, the only thing they can really do now to make it any more difficult is giving you something called solving equations for a literal variable. Raise your hands if you have never heard of that before. Solving an equation for a literal variable. Okay, good. I'm glad. This is going to be then the first new thing you guys are going to encounter. Okay, here's what's going to happen. I am going to give you a problem. It's going to look like this, like number 50 from the assignment. Capital I equals P R T, and they're going to give you a semicolon, and they're going to say solve for T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just erase this T right here, and I'm going to go and change its color. Okay. Okay. Ketchup and mustard right there for you. Okay. So, what you have to understand about solving for a literal variable is when you're solving... Anyone know why we learn order of operations? Anyone know why? Andres? So, we do in order. Okay. Um, that's, a good, that's a good answer without using the word order. If we can... You learn order of operations to learn how to solve equations. When you do, when you solve an equation, you are using order of operations backwards. Okay? So let me ask you guys a question real quick. In this problem here, I equals PR times T, is there any subtraction happening? No. So I don't need it, right? Is there any addition happening? 
No. Is there any division happening? No, there's not, right? There's no. There's no division going on. Is there Now, is there any multiplication happening? Yes, that's what's happening. Now, I know what, you guys were one step ahead of me when you said yes. There is multiplication. What is being multiplied in this problem? P, R, and T. But what are we trying to solve for? T. So how do I get rid of that PR? Divide by PR. Bam, that goes away. And i got to do it on this side, right? So I over PR equals T, and that is it. Yeah? Paul, how you doing? Uh, 52. D E minus 4F. Now they're starting to get a little little messy with you. They're going to throw some numbers in there. Equals 5G. And you are solving for E. So I'm going to go and just write out order of operations. Again, you don't have to, but it kind of helps just to have a reference. Is there any subtraction going on in this problem? Yeah, right? Subtracting, what, what's being subtracted? 4F is being subtracted, right? And what's our, keep your eye on the prize. What are we solving for? We're solving for E, right? So if there's subtraction going on, how do I get rid of that subtraction right there? Add 4F to both sides. DE equals 5G plus 4F. Any addition happening that we care about? No. Any division happening that we care about? No. Any multiplication happening that we care about? Yes. yes. D times E, right? What do I what do I divide by? Divide by D. That gets out of there. So E, I'll just go ahead and say 5G plus 4F over D equals E, or in your case, E equals 5G plus 4F over D. Raise your hands if you have any questions about this section, because this is the section that might give you guys a little bit of heartburn. Nothing? Because the result of heartburn is that you develop mathematical chest hair, which is what we want. 54. QR plus S equals T. We are solving for Q. Do I need to write out the order of operation, or do you think we got this? I think we got it, right? What should I do first? What do you think? Uh, Mr. President, what do you think? Minus S from both sides. Good job, sir. QR equals T minus S. And then we're solving for Q, so the last step would be uh, Jessica Bradshaw. We're solving for Q. Divide by R. Sounds good to me. That's going to get out of there, so... T minus S over R equals Q. Raise your hands if you were actually able to beat me to that answer, if you got there before I did. That's why you guys are the A-team. You guys good with this? Okay. Let me pause real quick here.